Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Let's set the scene. You've written your next killer Python program. It's gonna churn through a whole bunch of data and it's gonna do something amazing. You press run on your code and you realize that, hmm, it takes a while. It's not exactly fast. You pop open your task manager and you realize that, hey, CPU consumption is basically not that great. You look closely and you realize that, oh, your code is only running on one call. It's only running in one process, so it's taking up just one logical call. That call is burning up, it's going 100%, but everyone else is sort of just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. So that's not great. You want your code to basically make use of all available resources on your computer so that things can get done faster. As you can imagine, the answer is in parallelism. You want to break up your code so that it runs in multiple threads. These threads can go to different cores so that you'll fully utilize your CPU. Thankfully, as it turns out, Python gives you a very easy feature to use to do that. And that would be the process pool. Before you can achieve this, you do need to meet certain prerequisites. Whatever steps you want to parallelize needs to be built into a function. This function, of course, needs to be completely independent of any other function call or any state in your program. Basically, just imagine this function to be a program on its own. It will only work on the input it's given and it can only respond by returning an answer. You're gonna to need to be able to express your problem in this way or the process pool isn't going to work. Your second prerequisite is that your problem needs to be expressible in a way in which we can map the function to your problem space. Here's how mapping works. The code looks something like this. And what we're trying to say is that we want to map this function to all the data that is held within this list. So you're gonna to have to cast your problem into this form. Your inputs need to live in a list and essentially what's gonna happen is that this function is going to be invoked once for every element within the list. Because we're using the worker pool, this can happen in parallel. Remember, your function is going to return something at the end of the day, right? So essentially how this is going to be you know, created is your answer is going to come back as another list. Essentially the answer for the first invocation is going to go into the first position, so on and so forth. So that is how the map function works. Again, you're gonna to have to be able to express your problem in this form for this method to work. Once you have these two prerequisites, essentially you're good to go. The process pool code looks something like this. Firstly, you need to import the pool class, and then you need to create a pool object. Essentially, this pool represents your pool of workers who will work in parallel. Within the with block, you simply take the pool and map your function to your data. However, when not done, there is one more thing we need to do, and this is just you know, some kind of Python convention. Here's the deal. You probably have everything in one page of code, right? That is your parallel stuff and your main function they live in the same page of code. Now, how Python works is it's going to repeatedly call this page. And if you don't set things up right, it's going to keep hitting and running your main function such that you eventually get a fog bomb. You essentially get a whole bunch of processes coming out and yeah, it's messy. It's also quite difficult to kill off the individual processes. So yeah, try not to make this mistake if you can. What you need to do is you need to protect your main function with this if statement. What this line means is that you will only want to run your main function if this page of code was the main entry point. If this is the code page you actually ran yourself, this conditional will return true, and that's when main runs. For all the spawn copies, the name variable contains something different, and as a result, that code will not run your main code will not get run again and spawn even more processes from there. So that's how multiprocessing works in a nutshell. And if your code can be expressed in a way that, well, you can solve it with the Python pool, that makes things extremely easy. You don't have to know anything about multiprocessing at all to be able to do this. So yeah, that's it. Go ahead and parallelize your code. And of course, assuming that you have enough cores in your computer, enjoy the boost in speed as work is done in parallel. That's all there is for this particular episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net.
Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.